everybody. Thank you for coming. We're Please so glad enjoy to be here. the fruit and the dip. What? We're so glad to be here. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay. All right. So, does everybody have one of these guys? I think you do. Yeah. Okay. Now, the presentation on herbals is going to be a little longer than the nutrition one, just because it is. Okay. Because we have, there's a lot to know about herbals. It's not just a real simple topic. Okay. All right. All right important stuff to know. First of all, there are no laws establishing the safety or the efficacy of herbals. This is part, this is probably the biggest problem, is that there's no standardization. So, the biggest, there is actually a law that was enacted, I believe, in 2007 that specifies there can be no contaminants in the herbals. So, for example, I, I, I guess it's still the lead belt down here, isn't it? is where, up, up where I live. It's called the lead belt. Okay? A lot of soil is contaminated with lead. So anybody around here ever grow a garden, you realize whatever's in the dirt is in your plant? Okay. So if you have lead contamination in your soil, you're going to have lead contamination in your tomatoes. Okay? So what they did was they passed a law to make sure there were no heavy metals in, in herbs, that there were no contaminants like that actually in the herbs. But that's the only thing that's regulated herbals. Anything that says nutritional supplement, and they can claim the very moon. You know, you can lose 20 pounds in a month if you take this pill. They can say anything they want as long as they say nutritional supplement, and they don't have to prove it. Okay, so that, therein lies the problem with herbs. All right. The other thing is that herbals have a short shelf life. So, like, you might buy a bottle of aspirin that's going to last you two years. Herbals may last you six months. So, um, if you go buy uh, ground wild oregano leaves, okay, it may be 50 milligrams, like it says on the bottle, when they bottle it. But maybe it's sitting on the shelf at Walmart for a year and a half. So now maybe you've got 10. Okay, so how do we... Hi. I just want a time schedule so I can say long. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to ask you to do me a favor and fill that out because it's for class. It's a, it's a pre-test. So just fill out the pre-test and then afterwards the post-test. And here's a thing I'm going to work on. Okay. Pre -test. Pre -test. It's for class. Okay. <laughs> I have to have it. Okay. So, some companies, some very reputable companies, have decided to band together and um, form an association. There are two or three different associations that they can be members of. U.S. Pharmacopoeia, Natural Products Association, the Consumer Labs, and NSF International. And you can Google all of these. I think at the end of this, I did actually put the, the, um, the websites on the page that you can look up um, to find out what companies actually are trying very hard to guarantee the purity and the uh, efficacy of the herb. Those things are more important than anything because herbs lose their potency so quickly. So how do we get around that? This is how we get around it. Tinctures. Tinctures hold their potency. So if you're going to take an herbal, the best kind of herbal to take is a herbal tincture. It's a liquid that is a liquid. Now let me tell you about herbal tinctures. They taste terrible. <laughs> they are the nastiest stuff in the whole world. But they do actually hold their potency. So if you're going to take an herbal, <laughs> get a tincture and just hold your nose when you take it. You usually take a couple of drops right under your tongue. It's all you need. It's usually very potent. Okay, and so, but but that's that's how you take care of that problem. Okay. So the next thing you need to know about herbs is that herbs aren't just natural. They are drugs. Herbs are drugs. Everybody repeat after me. Herbs, Herbs are, are drugs. drugs. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about where we get medicine. White willow bark. That's where we found aspirin. Right. Okay. You can go to the herbalist and you can buy white willow bark. All it is is unrefined aspirin. Okay. Herbal fox glove. That's where we got digoxin. The way we found digoxin, which is a cardiac glycoside. It is a digitalis. Digitalis. It's from the digitalis. Purpura, purple box glow. We translate that. Okay. 
Native American uh, shaman actually gave the herbs, the leaves of the purple foxglove plant, to people that were having heart arrhythmias, and they chew the leaves. That's how we found it. Does everybody know that coca plant is where we get cocaine? Okay. Nightshade is where we get belladonna. Okay. Poppies are we, where we get opiates. What's belladonna for? Um, oh boy, it's uh, it's an anti. Oh. It's an antispasmodic. It's a, it's a, what? Is it a heavy duty thing? Or yeah, belladonna is the unrefined. I'm trying to think of the name of the, the drug that comes off of belladonna, but it's, it's like a, a, a sedative. Okay. okay, poppy is where we get all the opiates like morphine and Dilaudid and Oxycontin and those kind of things. All come from, directly from poppies. That's how we get it. So don't think of herbs as something harmless because they actually can be very Deadly, some of them. Well, Belladonna is deadly. So is Digitalis. Yeah. Okay, so I went to, there's a really wonderful um, site, website on the internet. It's the National, um, NCCAM, the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. This is a, uh, part of the National uh, Health Institute, the NIH, National Institute of Health, part of the federal government. And it was formed back around 2000 to research herbs because so many people were using them to find out actually what works because maybe some of this stuff actually works, right? Okay, so that's what that's what they're there for. And they find, they, they boiled this down to the top five herbs. The first one is evening primrose oil. Is there any woman here that has heard of that? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I use that in labor. Aha, uh -huh, very good. <laughs> okay, it's, it's basically for menopause and arthritis. Its efficacy has not been proven. But I'm going to, I want to stop here for just a minute. Remember last week when we talked about, or last time when we talked about um, the difference between um, empirical evidence and anecdotal evidence? Most herbals are fall under that anecdotal evidence because the problem is. Yeah, they're mostly testimonials. So the problem is that there's no drug companies that are going to make a billion dollars. So they're not they're not going to spend a lot of money researching this stuff. So it may actually work. The problem is we don't actually have that, you know, that empirical evidence to prove that it works. Okay, but a lot of people swear by it. Okay. All right. So then we go to St. John's Ward. St. John's Ward is it, it's a, a MAOI. It actually is an antidepressant. But it interacts with a lot of medications. Okay, so it's an okay thing to take if you're feeling a little down because it will work, but it will interact with anything else you take. So it's not a medicine you want to take if you're actually on anything else. Okay, it has to do with what happens in the in the um, liver because your liver metabolizes all those drugs. It blocks a lot of the metabolism, so you end up with like an overdose of whatever else you're taking. So it can be kind of dangerous, but it's very popular. All right, fenugreek. This stimulates lactation. <laughs> I'm also on that. Okay, here you go. It's uh, good for diabetes, it's good for laxative, and it also can induce labor. <laughs> now you know. You can just save that for next time. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, echinacea. Um, it's good for colds, it's, it, it bolsters the immune system, okay? And there's also little evidence for efficacy. Does anybody here ever take echinacea? I know I have. I get allergic reactions. Do you? Me and Julie still have. You have to be careful about some of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't die. I just I can't get my nose to the baby. I'm glad you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just a it's an irritating kind of a reaction. Yeah. So, but, but again. They're natural things. You might have an allergy to something just like you would any other medicine, right? right? Okay. Aloe vera burns and wound healing. It actually does work. This is one of those that really does have some evidence behind it. Um, but, and, and it's also good for laxative. You don't find a lot of people drinking it. I don't recommend it. There's other things you can use for laxatives that have less noxious problems, okay? But it, it can also... Um, cause allergies in anybody that has a latex allergy. Well, it so. doesn't help the allergy. It irritates it. It irritates it. 
So you want to be very no. careful on that. Okay. When I that, can I ask about like blanking out there too? It's basically all it does is it's a laxative. It'll clean you out really But there's other things that are probably more beneficial than, than that. I mean, if, if, if you have problems with chronic constipation, there's ways to fix that that are better. Okay. Like, like for example, a tablespoon of uh, flaxseed meal every day. A flaxseed meal every day. Flax. Flax, you know, like flax. linen, okay, flax, flaxseed meal. Yeah. Flaxseed meal, first of all, it's a great source of fiber. It gives you about all the fiber you need to use in the day. It also has all of the omega-3s that you need for yes. an entire so 1,000 milligrams of omega-3 in flax. You said meal, not seeds. I mean, meal. Are there seeds? I buy the well, seeds and I grind them fresh. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, Nancy did say if you grind them, they lose a lot of their uh, If you get them already value. ground, they're already the shelf yeah. life is better. Yeah. I buy the seeds and I grind them up when I'm going to make the pancakes. Right when you're going to okay. use them, it's better. That's just what I heard. I keep them in the freezer. I just keep mine in the freezer. Okay. You know, it's going to last their efforts. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and it also, you don't want to cook with that. Like if I make oatmeal and I'm going to put that in there, I'll make the oatmeal and then I'll put a tablespoon of flaxseed meal into the oatmeal because if you cook it, you cook a lot of that nutritive value out. So it would take one tablespoon a day? And you, and you can avoid fish oil, which personally I don't like fish oil, so that works for me. Okay. All righty. Barb? Yeah. Uh, there are some websites out there that I use if I'm if I'm like on a medicine, mm -hmm. but I want to take an herb, and you can actually put it in and it will show you if there's any, any, any interactions with your herbs. Very good. And vitamins. And, 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 that is a that's a neat thing to do because I anytime I'm taking more than one thing I like to check that out make sure there's no interact. Maybe you can send me that website. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's called Interact, but I'm not sure. Very good. I have a book like that in the kitchen, but uh, anyway, it's right here. Oh no, it's right here. But anyway, we'll take care of that later. Okay. All right. Now here's some good herbs to know. Okay. Cayenne. Cayenne is a catalyst for other herbs. So it improves circulation. The downside is cayenne will light you up like a firecracker. <laughs> okay. okay. It's hot. It's very hot. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's actually places where you can get like cayenne um, inhalers and stuff like that. But basically, it doesn't actually do something that's great, but it, it improves your circulation. So if you're taking another herbal, it'll potentiate it. It'll make it stronger because it gets it to where it needs to go faster. Cranberry. Cranberry is really good for urinary tract health. Because everybody, everybody probably is aware of that. The reason that it works is because cranberry acidifies the urine. And bacteria can't live in an acid environment, so bacteria simply die. So that's why it works, and it works very effectively. And especially for people that have to use a catheter all the time, they tend to get a lot of urinary tract infections because they have to do that. This is a really good way to as a preventative that avoids taking antibiotics on a continuous basis. Okay. All right, feverfew. Feverfew is very good for migraine. It works very well for migraine headaches. Uh, it also helps for like menstrual problems, and, you know, menstrual pain and stuff like that. So that's a good one to take care of. natural uh, guru type people think that garlic actually will help to prevent cardiovascular disease because it's an antifungal. And believe it or not, the waste products from fungus happen to be cholesterol. So if you have a heavy fungal load in your body, then 
maybe that's contributing to atherosclerosis in their body. That's wow. one of the reasons that they recommend garlic, but you do have to be careful because garlic is a book. So as long as you're aware of that, and you, maybe, you know, you start noticing your bruising more easily or whatever, then you cut down on garlic. So if you're on, if you're on a blood thinner, you don't want to take it. Not a good idea. Not, you want to be very careful if you take it. I'm talking about a little shake on garlic toast right. as much as when people are, I'm talking about taking garlic pills. Yeah. Every day. You know, like we, so if people have garlic toast here and there, that's not no, right. that's not, that's not right. effective. It's no, no, no. The concentrated herb. Yeah. yeah. Okay, green tea. Green tea is also a blood thinner. It also lowers cholesterol, and it is an antioxidant. So those are all very big positives. All right. Uh, olive leaf is an antimicrobial. However. Like I said before, the biggest problem with buying the herb olive leaf is that it loses its potency so fast. So really, olive leaf tincture is the only one that, to bother with if you're going to use it as an antimicrobial. Okay, and it's also an anti-helminthic. What is that? That means it kills worms. Now that may not be a big deal to you, but where I go in third world countries, everybody has worms. Not only that, but when you think about our gut, our gut health. Some of the junky stuff that we eat, chances are we can also have herb, uh, worms, not necessarily worms so much as uh, intestinal problems, okay? And when you start taking things like olive leaf, maybe you're taking care of some of those kinds of problems in the herb and it's not necessarily that either, okay? All right, turmeric. Turmeric actually detoxifies the liver. Now, I know a lot of people like to think about getting detoxed once. <laughs> the problem is we continue to eat things, we continue to live in the world, we continue to absorb things that are, aren't healthy. And so if you're taking something like turmeric to detoxify your liver, you're probably going to want to take it at least a couple of times a week to continuously keep your liver cleaned out. Okay? It's also a blood thinner. It's also an anti-inflammatory. In other words, it can, it can reduce pain. Like our friends. And wild oregano is my personal favorite. It is a very powerful antibiotic, excuse me, antibiotic, antimicrobial, antifungal, antibiotic, antiparasitic. So all, all really good ones to know. On the on the garlic, yeah. I saw a uh, <coughs> article on uh, on the internet for a, a Japanese lady doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, Used garlic and the uh, properties of the, uh, I guess the Allison and the garlic, mm -hmm. uh, retarded the growth of MRSA. It's a very powerful antimicrobial. Yeah, and you'll find that wild oregano will do the same thing. And it's good for candida both of those. Okay, now these are some herbs to avoid. Kava kava. Kava kava is a natural anti-anxiety herb, but it can react with a lot of different medications. It can also cause drowsiness, and if you are depressed and taking it, it will make your depression worse. Not, not a good thing. Um, it can also cause a lot of problems in pregnancy with baby. Don't go there. Okay. All right. Ephedra, Mahuang, is now illegal in the United States. That was in a lot of Scott pills and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah. Cause heart arrhythmias, panic attacks. It can actually kill. This is a very dangerous. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Yeah. In a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. But they they throw their heart into an arrhythmia, and maybe there's some place where nobody's going to shock them out of it. You know, that's not a good thing. So, okay. And Don Kwai. This can also cause problems with pregnancy and problems with IBS. So don't want to go there either. My friend said, "How can I remember that one?" I said, "Big girls." And she said, "Don't cry." I got to go. Good one. question I need to ask you before I leave. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to interrupt. <coughs> Melatonin. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter of age ten mm -hmm. has taken melatonin at her dad's to sleep. Okay. Can she? Why is she taking it? 
But she said she can't go sleep. Okay. Is she, how late is she drinking anything with That's caffeine? That's what I asked. Okay, because the first, the first culprit is nothing with caffeine past 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if, if after she actually does that, she still needs 10 milligrams of, or 5 milligrams of melatonin, it won't hurt her. I wouldn't recommend it at her age, but it won't hurt her. Okay. I mean, it's awfully young to have to use something to sleep. Yeah. It depends yeah. how much. I have some that are <coughs> 1 milligram. Okay. And I have some that are 1.5. But they make them in, in one store, they only had threes. Ones and tens. threes and fives. Tens and there was is about tens. the top. Yeah. But I mean, if she's fine. taking one of my, if she ever, I mean, those kind of ones, mm -hmm. it does very little. Sounds like the, but maybe the caffeine needs to be avoided. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Sugar. That's yeah. why you know, I told her, of course, she's like her mom. She wants to argue with me all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and she's that's like her usually mom, she when, up all night. when yeah. we start talking to patients about problems with sleeping, that's the very first place we go. Because in this, in our culture, we think we can drive, drink a Pepsi Cola at 9 o'clock at night and drop off to sleep. Not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, especially Mountain Dews and oh, yeah. Monsters and all this kind of... Cold coffee. Yeah, and all these things. Cold you can't things. do it. You know, I, I know you like it. But you can't do that in sleep. <laughs> it doesn't... 3 o'clock. I'll just tell her Yeah, 3 o'clock. i got to go get her. Okay. <laughs> so glad to see you, Mary. Thank you, baby. Hello, hello. She brought a box. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm coming back next week. Next week, right? Yeah, I'm gonna spend week. the night. Save that time. Save that time. Hey, this is my book only. Mine's fatter. Oh, yours is fatter. <laughs> I told you I had a book like you. Yeah, it's the same book, but it got fatter. Yeah. So I thought if you find a, a magical <laughs> thing to help us get skinny, <laughs> well, find me that, honey. <laughs> That's where we are. Okay. Does anybody here take something called warfarin or coumadin? No. Count your blessings. Warfarin is very commonly used in heart patients and people who have had blood clots in their legs and things like that. It's a blood thinner. It also reacts with lots of stuff, okay, including a lot of foods. So, if you're on warfarin, no green tea, St. John's wort, cranberry, ginkgo, ginseng, garlic, ginger, red clover, or fish oil. Okay, wow. lots of stuff. Okay, basically that's probably the short list. All right, aspirin, ginkgo, fish oil, garlic, vitamin E, and white willow bark. Like we learned already, white willow bark is aspirin. So if you take white willow bark and aspirin, you're taking two aspirin. Okay. But all of these things are all blood thinners, so you don't want to go there, okay? <coughs> Antidepressants in St. John's Ward can send you into a hypertensive crisis, okay? So you don't want to take St. John's Ward on top of a prescription antidepressant of any kind. Birth control pills in St. John's Ward, you might have a surprise. Oh, oh. Okay. like it, it works. Like it doesn't work. Like, oops, I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, don't go there either. So if I ever <laughs> want a baby yeah, take again, it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> she said, I'm on my birth control. I'm on birth control. I should have done that so two much years for that. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> websites I was telling you about. This is the U.S. Pharmacopoeia and Natural Products Association, NS, NSI uh, International. You can go to these sites and actually see which companies are holding themselves accountable for their efficacy and, and everything. So those are, those are some really good sites to check out. Okay. And then, okay, the surprise of the day, what the fruit dip is. Like yogurt. It is. Yep, yeah, that's plain, non-fat yogurt. That's I always buy Danon because it's natural, so it doesn't have any nasty mm. stuff in it. And uh, half a teaspoon. Uh, I think I might have put one teaspoon on there. It might be a misprint. Anyway, but it's a half a teaspoon of vanilla and five packets of um, stevia. Stevia. Yeah. Wow. Well, I hope it really did. Mm -hmm. It tastes like regular sugar. I love stevia anyway, though. So I do too. Stevia. I do too. Hand. Well, I would have thought that was regular sweetened vanilla. You did what? I you grew stevia? 
Yes, I did. Do. I grew some Terrible. a couple of years ago. I have some yeah. dried stevia still, but I grew the fresh plant two years ago. Yeah, mm. they had it at Lowe's. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, three ninety nine for a plant, and it took off in the yeah. Oh. Sort of like a we don't a, know if we have a mint type looking thing. I don't know how you use the leaves exactly. I've never tried you that. Well, you, you, you break one out. up and bruise it a little, and bruise it, like, and twist it, and put it's it. It's a lot in easier like just to buy the pack. Yeah, yeah, it's it's right. Right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but it, that's true. Like, like I said, it yeah. was. It's something that can be grown locally. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> challenged some teenagers I know. I said, I dare you. It's good tea though. Bite this leaf. And uh, I said, I dare you to bite into this leaf. Well, they're intrigued because they want to know, is it going to be nasty or well, sour? Well, at least it's not a worm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bite this. That's good. <laughs> okay, now you can answer your post-tests. Take oh, a break. Post